Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration here with your Sana Q&As. I do have some announcements that I want to make and I'm going to put this little clip on the beginning of each of my videos today. So if you've already heard this, just fast forward the next several minutes. I am in the process now of getting ready to relocate. I will be moving to Mexico in two weeks. So I have completely booked all of my session time allowance between now and then in order to get done everything else that I still need to get done before the move. So today I went and disabled the booking forms for more sessions. So I won't be accepting new sessions for the next month or so. In about a month or so I'll announce when I'm putting that the booking page up live again and you can start booking sessions again. The reason I'm not is because one, there's going to be this whole transition period of temporary place, finding a long-term place, getting reliable internet all set up. I don't want to not be reliable and not show up for sessions. It's very important to me to value everyone's time. So for this period of time, while this all is taking place, there won't be sessions scheduled. Um, and then I will reactivate that later. Of course, my website will still be operational. You can still use all of the digital training courses on there. That's why I create those because those can help you all the time. You know, my time and my energy is limited, but when you sign up for those courses, that helps you anytime. I don't have to be there and be present for you. So if you want to check out any of those new courses that I put up, like the self-care mastery course or the eight different bonuses that come with that, those all come separate as well. They're like mini lessons, exercises, guided visualizations to help you with specific parts of the healing process. All of that is still available. I'm also still accepting personal email supports. So that's where people submit a question, they give me some background information, and I take 48 hours to send them back in a response. Those will still be still be available during the next month or so because I can do those at any time and I can upload those anytime I have good internet access. Um, that won't be a problem. So those will still be available online. And then in terms of YouTube, I'm gonna be here again next Monday answering several more questions and that's going to be the last of these Monday sauna Q&As and then after that I'm going to come up with videos as I have time. There's definitely still going to be more videos. I'm not going anywhere. There's just going to be this transition period. The videos may change a little bit when I come back. I have like a whole list of questions, like questions that could last me months and months of content. I'm going to sift through that. I'm going to look for common themes, the biggest themes, what seems to be the things that are people are most asking about right now so I can create the content for some of these videos. And I do want to also give you a little teaser and not tell you too much right now, but the exciting thing is I'm bringing back the live Q&A format. It's going to take place through Patreon. It's going to be once a month, and I'm also going to be creating a monthly mastermind group. So that's going to be for people who are at the higher levels of self-healing. We're not going to be talking about the narcissist really at all at that level. It's basically just going to be on the self-care and self-healing work. The sauna Q&A, that's going to take place once a month. That's going to be open to anybody through the Patreon page. And I'm going to announce all of that in April. So it's going to be the next month or so of the transition. Coming in April, we're going to have this new reveal, these new things that are going to be coming up for you guys. So I do want to thank you for your patience in advance during this next month. I will tell you more in the future about my decision to move. I kind of didn't even want to say anything. I wanted to tell people after I moved. It's just not feasible, especially because because my schedule is now entirely booked for the next two weeks. I will tell you more about it in the future, but I do want to tell you that Mexico for me is about reaching the thriving stage, like the next level for me. I feel like I'm surviving and I'm surviving really well now. And several months ago when I was working with my coach and really reevaluating for myself, like what's the next level of thriving for me? I knew that I wanted to move. I knew I wanted to move abroad. I just didn't know where and I'm starting to research places, but this is all part of the next stage of thriving because as I'm I am living and thriving, I am able to bring that much more to you through my energy, through my awareness, and through the content that I deliver to you. So thank you for your patience, and I am really excited to share with you the new backgrounds and the new exciting stages that we'll be moving through together. So let's get to some questions. So this question says, Hi Meredith, first of all, thank you for your work. You are amazing, and your videos are very inspiring. 
Here's my question. I often hear survivors have issues staying by themselves after the abuse and avoid jumping right into another abusive relationship. I have the opposite problem, especially since I've been educating myself about what I've been through. I can't form friendships or relationships. I even struggle with maintaining good interactions with my nearest family because I'm terrified of getting hurt again. It has been like this for a while now and it's starting to get heavy on me. How can I connect with people and allow myself to love someone else? Kisses from Italy. So this is a great question. I think it's a question a lot of people start asking after a period of time, you know, after a period of time of being apart from these relationships. So yes, a lot of people try to fill the loneliness with serial relationships or dating. You know, just just there's like this gnawing sense of restlessness. So they just they just get out there just to meet people. And then what happens is that gnawing anxiety and restlessness convinces them that it's okay, that you know, whatever shows up shows up and they're going to settle for that and they're just going to keep seeing these people or hanging out with these people, whether they're friends or dates or whatever. But if it doesn't feel entirely good, sometimes in the early stages, people can just get into this rut of just going out to hang out with people to mask that sense of loneliness. Of course, there's no loneliness in the world more devastating than being surrounded by people or being in a friendship or in a relationship and feeling so alone. That's the worst kind, you know. Um, so it's important to allow for that space for healing for a while. Embracing the solitude, getting to know yourself, revealing more of your authenticity, revealing more of your own purpose, figuring out what you really want in life, what your dreams are, not someone else's dreams, but your dreams. Maybe you've always been living someone else's dreams, like your mom's dream or your dad's dream or society's dream or your ex's dream for you, but what's your dream? And until you're really clear about that, yeah, it could be dangerous to get out there. It could be be really complicated but then it's like at some point along the lines at some point of figuring these things out and working on yourself and working on the self-care really coming to know who you are really feeling comfortable expressing that knowing what you want knowing and feeling and living that sense of purpose in every moment when you're at that place you know being very clear about what your dreams are and being very clear about not settling for anything else and not compromising your values and dreams then at some point there needs to kind of come this balance where you start socially reintegrating again and that's that's scary so the question is you know and I, and I asked myself this question like are you trying to connect out of desperation and filling that hole or are you feeling confident and grounded and centered in your authenticity and looking forward to sharing that with others? That's the question there. Which is it? And how can you tell? Well, like I mentioned earlier, one, you know, is like this restless, gnawing, anxiety, desperate sensation to connect, like, mm, like this urgency. If you feel an urgency, calm down right? Because that's that addiction cycle, that any kind of like immediate urgency, that's the addiction. So calm that down and start to breathe. Like, how do you know when you're just really ready to be out there and reintegrating and sharing with people? It's like, it just, maybe you just, you go out and you don't really intend to meet with people and you're, you're just in that state. You're fully owning that and you're feeling confident as you and you're expressing yourself and you're just exuding that vibe. And it's like this pleasant surprise when some new person comes across, you know, your radar. Maybe you meet them out and about or maybe someone reconnects with you from before or Somehow you just get in these right situations at the right time to meet new friends or new groups or new potential lovers. And how do you tell is like it feels calm. I mean, there's the butterflies and the excitement of meeting new people and all of that, but there's a calmness to it and sort of like this pleasant knowing versus this restless urgency and anxiety that's gnawing at you just to fill that hole. So my suggestions are to take it slow and really listen to how you feel. That is your main barometer. If you've been listening to my channel for a while, you know that's what I preach over and over again because of the wound to the self-trust that takes place in PTSD, that takes place in abuse. 
you've lost trust. You've lost trust in yourself. You've lost trust in other people. You've lost trust in the universe and God, because how can such a thing happen in this world if God really loved you? You know, if this universe really wanted the good for you, we all go through these sorts of moments after the abuse and after the PTSD. So it's important to take things slow and redevelop that and really feel. How do you feel? Tune into that. That's your barometer. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. You know, if you're out there too early, out and about and trying to meet people, you're probably still meeting jerks. Like if, if, if all you're meeting are all these narcissistic people, you still have a lot of work to do. Not that I'm saying you're never gonna meet one again, You'll definitely meet them, but if you just feel like all you meet and all you connect with are narcissistic something on that cluster B spectrum individuals, then you still have a lot of healing to do. So if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Don't jump into something. Don't accept something. Don't settle for something that doesn't feel right just because you're lonely. The right people will show up when it's the right timing. Uh, one of my clients asked me a couple weeks ago, you know, she was trying to get back out and dating after taking some time off after an abusive relationship. And she was still disappointed in the people that she was meeting. She was still seeing the same patterns, you know, different people, slightly different, but the same basic textbook patterns. And she asked me like, you know, so how's that working out for you? <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, haven't met anybody um, other than the friendships that I have and developing those and that's been amazing and I feel okay with that. Like I, I don't feel like I have to be out and about and I don't have myself on any kinds of online dating profiles because I just don't want to be in that space. I realize like that's not the space for me to meet someone. That's the space for me to meet a lot of narcissistic individuals that I don't want to actually have anything to do with. And so not going that direction, you know, Dana from Thrive After Abuse and months ago I heard her say something like, you know, just like you don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry, don't go date when you're lonely. And that is so true. I mean, that just hit me so hard. She's totally right. Don't go out and just date or just try to meet new friends when you're lonely. Like that vibe is going to exude out from you. It's like this desperation and this loneliness. People are going to tune into that. And either they're going to be healthy people or are going to be totally turned off by that because you don't appear to be healthy and you appear to be desperate. Or they're going to be narcissistic individuals who are going to see that and latch right onto that because that looks like a perfect target. When you are ready, you will meet people, but not until you're ready. Like and the craziest thing is that the right people could be right in front of you. Like literally they could be right in front of you. They could be at your work. They could be near where you live. They could be some person you have some kind of contact with. Like they could literally be right there in your life and you don't see them because you're not ready. They could be right there because you have some kind of blinders on either from the past or from what you think it's supposed to look like, what you think friendship needs to look like, or what you think a lover needs to look like, and you just can't see them. You can't see them because of your blinders and your filters. That's also a possibility. That can also happen too, which is why it's really important to take inventory on those things. Like we all have blind spots in life. There's always something that we're not seeing. So constantly becoming more and more aware of that and always taking inventory of the people who are in your life. You know, what value do those people bring to your life? What impact do they bring to your life? And what value and impact do you bring to theirs? So rebuilding the trust starts with self-trust. You know, you talk about you don't know like who to trust and, and who, who you're meeting and all this as you're getting back out there. It all starts with you because if you don't trust yourself, how do you know who to trust? What's going to happen when you start meeting a new friend or a new date and you get to that moment where you're like, okay, either I trust the feeling I have or I trust the thing that they're saying. How do you know what to trust if you don't trust yourself, if you don't know when you trust yourself and when you're lying to yourself? So start by listening to your body because by the way, denial is a form of lying to yourself. Like We were all lying to ourselves when we were in the denial. We wanted to believe the lie. The lie was much more beautiful than the reality. The reality was ugly. We didn't want to see that truth. 
So you got to start listening to your body, listening to your gut feeling. Your body doesn't lie. Your mind can lie. Your mind can come up with all kinds of illusions and doubts. And so can your heart. Your heart can lie. It can get caught up in fantasy and illusion and don't know what's real and what's not. But your body always tells you the truth. That's the primal level of intuition. There's many layers of intuition. The other's too complicated to start for right now. Start with the body. When you have zero trust in yourself, you don't know how to trust your mind, you don't know how to trust your heart, listen to your body, trust your body, trust that gut feeling, your body doesn't lie. So listen to that when you're out and about with people, when you're hanging out with friends, like one of, you've probably heard these in my videos too, one of the main signals that you're with a toxic person now it doesn't even have to be on the cluster b spectrum this could just be a drama queen you know that sort of stuff like significantly less amount of manipulation but still if you are hanging out with somebody and you feel exhausted like you know normally when you hang out with people you should feel like uplifted and happy and excited and it feels great and time flies but if you're just like the clock is ticking and you feel exhausted during and afterward, that's a bad sign. That's a sign that person is sucking away a lot of your energy. It also means you don't have boundaries, right? Because your boundaries are not stopping that process. That's one way that your body tells you things aren't okay. Maybe your body like shuts down. Like maybe you're dating somebody and they're trying to engage you physically and maybe even it was okay like earlier, but now suddenly your body is just shutting down. It's because your body is telling you something. Something's not okay. Your body doesn't want to open to that person. Why not? Ask those questions. You know, whatever you're feeling in your body, what is that? What are you feeling? If you feel like you don't have a good connection between the mind and body like that, check out one of the new trainings that I created. It's just a mini training um, and it's called Psychosomatic Awareness and Reintegration. And there's a mini lesson and then a guided visualization and it's gonna guide you into this way of reconnecting with your body and paying attention to the messages that your body is sending you reconnecting that whole continuum of body mind spirit really becoming aware of that and that's like the primal way of getting in touch with your intuition and rebuilding that sense of self-trust like when you're starting from zero and you just don't know what to trust anymore it's almost like you have to rely on something tangible that's why the body is amazing your body is tangible it's not some ethereal idea or energy like your body is real and it's going to send you a message and the more in tune you are with that the more connected you're going to be with your intuition with your sense of self-trust you know if you're out and about and meeting people and you just feel like in social situations or out in public you always feel like you're in danger like maybe your hyper vigilance is 10x you know, when you're at a party or a gathering or at the grocery store, just out and about, and you just always feel like you're in danger, that's a sign that you're still locked in the past, that that's still some heavy PTSD. PTSD just means you're locked in the past. Your subconscious is locked in the past. It's still reliving the past because you haven't processed it in order to move through it. You haven't felt it in order to heal it. So if you're out there and you just feel like this restless anxiety, fear, danger, hypervigilance, Keep working on self-care, especially the breathing, the mindfulness, and presence. Like start with the most basics. Like if you get out and about and the panic attack comes on, you know, some people might have the panic like a heat wave. It's like maybe like a hot flash that comes over your body and like you're just sweating and panicking and you just want to strip your clothes off and like... <sighs> You just can't get your breath or whatever. You got to get everything off your neck. Like maybe that's kind of a panic attack that you have. Just start breathing. <sighs> Take a big exhale. Start breathing. Maybe for you, the panic is more like cold. I've had these before too. Usually when it's colder outside, but it'll feel like from one moment to the next, all the heat was just sucked out of my body. And like, the pain of the coldness going into the bones and just like this like shivering paralysis of cold and just can't stop shivering and like your body contracts maybe even into like a fetal position just desperately trying to get warm that's another form of panic attack these sorts of things can happen if you're out and about and you're not feeling comfortable you're feeling unsafe Go to the breathing, start breathing. If you're feeling cold, you wanna take quick breaths, like the breath of fire in yoga, like shh, 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 shh. 
that kind of breath because that's invigorating. It's going to get a lot of heat going in your body. If you're feeling too hot, you need to take slow, long breaths because that's going to calm everything down. It's going to cool things down. It's going to bring you back to the present moment in mindfulness. And if you're still having a lot of flashbacks and a lot of negative self-talk, and you're going to notice that, I mean, maybe you don't notice it as much when you're alone, though the flashbacks and all that, you can just be plaguing your reality, just constant, your inner dialogue is constantly reviewing the past and putting you down and punishing and doubting and all this. And sometimes we're just not aware of that, even when we're alone. Sometimes it's more suddenly apparent when you're out with other people. Sometimes it's like your inner dialogue becomes so loud when you're with other people, you notice it more than maybe if you're at home and dissociating or just zoning out and not really paying attention. And maybe you notice it more when you're in social situations. If you're still having a lot of negative self-talk and or flashbacks, I highly recommend checking out my training on reprogramming the flashbacks and self-talk. That I believe is one of the most powerful parts of the healing work after the abuse and after the PTSD, especially if you grew up in a family like that because you grew up in a negativity paradigm. Like if you grew up in a family with narcissistic abuse, you're going to feel social anxiety as an adult. There's an awkwardness to you. Like I'll admit that when I'm out and about, I, I feel it. Like I don't feel as awkward and I'm alone. And then I go out and about and I notice how my body tenses more and just how much more awkward it is. Like it, there's still an awkwardness to it, even though I feel like it's significant significantly easier to relate to people and talk to people nowadays than in the past. But there's an enormous amount of that social anxiety and awkwardness to overcome because things were fucking awkward when you were growing up. Everything was weird and awkward. Either there was way too much attention focused on you, you know, from like, say, the whole family gathering, or there wasn't any at all, or it was back and forth, you know, and up and down, and you didn't know if the attention you were going to get was going to be an idealization. Oh, so-and-so, so amazing and so proud, or some kind of, you know, cruelty, abuse, put down, you know, that sort of thing. So naturally, when you go out and about to meet people, you're afraid that the same thing will happen. You don't know are you going to receive kindness or are you going to receive cruelty? What is it going to be? You're not really sure what to expect. So that could be really unnerving. And it's really important to upgrade that self-talk, to upgrade your reality paradigm from that negativity paradigm, from the self-doubt, from the awkwardness and all of that from childhood into a new paradigm of possibility and more positive ways of looking at the world and interacting with the world. And this piece will help you so much to rebuild your self-esteem because your self-esteem comes by your interactions with the universe and people around you, with the world around you. Like as you take action, what is the response from people in the world around you? When that response is, is good, your self-esteem is high. When that response is low, your self-esteem is low. But it, it's not dependent on the outside world. The outside world is just responding to your inside world. So when your inner world, your inner paradigm is more positive, it's more based on possibility and openness and what's going to happen versus it's all negative and it's all this and it's all that. It's a very different way that you interact with the world around you. Very, very different way that the world responds to you because you are creating reality and reality is creating you. So one of the main questions, one of the main challenges here for social, social life after abuse, after a period of time of healing, ask yourself the question, can you trust yourself to remain in authenticity with yourself? with your self-expression and in alignment and integrity with your values? Can you trust yourself to maintain in that authenticity and alignment when you're with other people? Because if not, maybe you can't feel at ease around them. Maybe you find yourself getting into situations with people where you're trading in your authenticity for acceptance. Don't ever trade in your authenticity for acceptance. As recovering codependents, we are too willing to do this because of the past. We've been told you had to give up who you are, your sense of authenticity, you know, your thoughts, your feelings, your needs, your perceptions of reality, your desires and hopes for the future. All of that 
wasn't allowed in order for you to fit in, in order for you to get any sense of conditional love. You had to compromise all of that authenticity in order to get that acceptance. But now as adults, we can make a diff, we can make different decisions. We don't have to do that. We don't have to sacrifice our authenticity. We can stay in that authenticity and wait for the right groups, wait for the right communities and tribes. You will find your community and tribes of people who share common values with you. And that's another question. Like, do you know what your values are? Do you really know what your core values are? Because if you don't know what those are and you can't really define those, like really articulate them to yourself, then how do you know what you're looking for in community and tribe, in a mate, in a friend? Like, how do you know what to find? Make sure that they have similar core values. And maybe those core values are very, very different than your family of origin. Very different. And probably are. Like what you're actually looking for in life versus where you've come from. So, you know, this person says they're from Italy. So I'm going to put a link here also to an Italian resource for you. Um, it's this great woman. Her channel is called Vapole. I'm going to put the link here so you can find her. Also, I'm going to do a little video at some point soon with a bunch of international resources. I have someone in Germany. I'm going to put his link at the bottom below here too, just in case anyone from Germany is listening to this. I want to keep putting in more resources like this because I know there's people all around the world who are listening. And also, if you would like to submit um, subtitles for any of my videos in your native language, if you understand English really well and you would like to translate any of my videos into your language, there's now a possibility to do this. People are allowed to submit subtitles. I've had two different people submit subtitles for two of my videos now in Spanish and then I was able to read those and then approve them and now people can watch those videos with subtitles in Spanish too. So if you would like to add subtitles in German or any other language, that's great too and I also want to be able to link you guys up to other resources in other languages to help you out. So I am sending you a big hug.